unless Colin Powell, I'm joking, Jerome, right? Unless Colin Powell says something crazy, freaky, naughty, freaky, crazy, freaky, naughty, right? The Bulls should have an end of the day run. We'll see. We have no idea. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrading.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is having a blessed, wonderful, healthy, happy, smiling uh, weekend. Hope everybody is doing great. Hope everybody's having a great summer. Uh, we are less than about a week away from uh, Labor Day. That's kind of like the, the last inning of, uh, of the game for summer before the kids go to school, at least in the Northeast here. I know a lot of you kids uh, started in Florida, uh, but this is the last le leg of summer. So enjoy yourself because again, especially for all of us who live uh, anywhere in the Northeast, especially here in the tri-state area, we know how mother nature loves to play with our emotions uh, during the winter. So enjoy what we have here. Speaking of playing with emotions, I don't think, if you guys remember, usually I don't do a, a Thursday night video. I did a Thursday night video because Wednesday I was just way too tired. I don't think I could have came in with more of a bullish stance for Friday's session that was possible, right? We had this wonderful, wonderful rally. And again, this is going to be a little bit important going into this week, so bear with me a second, right? So we had this really wonderful rally for in, in a month, right? We took, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Again, very, very big level coming up here, right? We claimed the 50-day moving average, had a four-week rally. I don't want to use the word topped out, but again, that might not be the, and the craziest word to use, right? Had this really, really big move, uh, went down seven days in a row. And Thursday, it looked like, Wednesday going into Thursday, it looked like the sellers were tired. It looked that way, right? Because what happened on Thursday, we, we reclaimed the five-day moving average, this 17 level that we talked about several times, right? If you see here, right here from the eight, uh, from August 23rd and August 24th, it got rejected twice at 317. And then finally Thursday, it reclaimed the five-day moving average. And if you've been wanting, kind of watching this video uh, even more than once, you know how important the five-day moving average it is for me. It's not the end-all be-all, but it does show you who has uh, control of short-term sentiment. So going into Friday's session, I was ridiculously bullish. I'm, I mean, I, I couldn't, I, I can't even put it into more words how more bullish I was. And we knew that the only thing, matter of fact, I think uh, Kyler already put it into the intro here. Um, I don't, the only thing I said that, that could possibly derail this rally, right, or potential what could happen on Friday, if Chairman Powell speaking uh, in Jackson's hole, that's what I said, right, could say some freaky naughty, freaky naughty stuff. And that's exactly what happened, okay? Whatever he said, and again, I just don't care really word for word what he said, it's all about price action. Whatever he said did freak out the market participants. And we went from, reclaiming 317 short-term sentiment off the five-day moving average to reclaiming the bottom range. And you can see here how many times it stopped at 313. So we reclaimed 317 to the upside only a day later to lose that 317 and lose the bottom of the range here at 313. And you guys remember that that, that level that we, we were talking about in the beginning of the week before we reclaimed, right? I thought there was a shot at 310, 311. Well, it, they went through 310, 311 like it wasn't even there to close around 307 on the queues. And the reason why that's so significant, and again, kind of let me let me let me, let me just kind of back test for a second. Number one, I've always I've always maintained this fact. Our job is just to gather information, okay? I've, I've, I've said this time and time again, if, if, if yesterday's, if Friday's price action didn't prove it, uh, I don't know what market you're looking at. Our opinions, okay, are based on the previous night's research, right? It's our data, okay? We don't know what the market's gonna do. Like I said in the previous video, if I knew for sure we were gonna rally off this five day, all in, both hands, both hands, you know, both feet, two eyes, two ears, all in, right, on the long side. Again, we don't know, right? We don't know, we're all idiots, our opinions don't matter. The only thing we can do, like I said, is to continue to take in data, data and make a determination our game plan based on the previous night's data. So the fact that we reclaimed the five-day moving average, that was super duper bullish. That was our data. 
And now the question is what happens next, right? And this is where uh, we always talk about that the market is the greatest reality show that's not on television. It's just unscripted. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, one word from the from the chairman, one word for anybody, one word, one macro event, one headline news, and everything goes to hell in the handbasket. And I, I tell you, you know, look, when he started speaking, they started taking down the market. And all I kept on saying is, we got to give the bulls, right? The first half hour, we got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. We got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. And what happened actually is as soon as he stopped speaking, if you guys remember, for like two minutes, the NASDAQ engulfed what he said, and we went from down 80 points or so on the NASDAQ to green for like three minutes. And I was like, all right, let's wait for the 10 o'clock confirmation. Let's see where we are. I think, I think shorts got trapped, right? That was my thinking. And then next thing you know, like five minutes later, everything starts losing the bottom of the range. And I was like, well, wait a minute, what's going on here, right? And you could start looking, and I'll show you the pivots in a second, Initially, I started putting in, as you can imagine, all long pivots, just because, again, from last night's research and the previous night's research. But once we started losing, and this is kind of where we pivot, right? We pivot, pun intended, I guess, um, to kind of the other side of the market, not because the market's going down, because we start seeing technical damage. And as soon as we started seeing you know, 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock, just the market wasn't rallying, wasn't really selling off yet, right? Just wasn't, it was still down 70, down 80 points on the NASDAQ. But once we started getting down to that 313 level on, on the, you know, 313 level on the bottom of the range, I was like, well, wait a minute, something is wrong here. And once you started seeing everything started losing life, you started automatically going on the other side of the, uh, other side of the ledger. And the one thing I've always maintained to traders, especially if you're an active trader, you have a right to not get painted in the corner. And that's kind of the, the, the whole way of kind of how my career is, especially in the last 12 years. You want to trade both sides of the market, but you want to trade both sides of the market, not on feel, not on anticipation. You want to trade on both sides of the market because market's telling you technically, hey, your thesis is wrong. I don't give a crap that you were bull biased the night before. It's not here anymore. The, the market is telling you that this candle has taken out not only yesterday's low, which is a big red signal, it took out the previous range low, basically the whole day of buyers and sellers commingling at levels. And now you have to start looking at the dark side. Dum, 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 da, dum, 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 right? And that's exactly what happened. And unfortunately, so many new traders, even if you're not, even if you're not um, um, an inve investors, again, this video is really not for you. Investors, you're sitting in positions. Maybe you know your stock goes higher a year from now. Maybe it goes higher a week from now. We don't know. Right? We're not talking to you guys. You guys are a completely different animal. We're talking about from the day to day guys, the intraday day levels. Once your thesis gets blown up, guys, okay, you have two choices. You could either fight, okay, fight reality and fight the tape or you can switch to both sides. Again, this is where you have to, if you're an intraday trader, I believe you have to trade both sides of the market. It's like having one hand and not using the other. That's what I said, right? But most important is you have to have the flexibility of putting yourself in a position that you're trading the market you have, not the, posi not the market you want. Because if you were still looking for the, for the market to bounce, after we not only took out the previous day's low, which is a huge red flag, but we took out the previous uh, previous range low, then you're sitting and praying, right? And sitting and praying is a great fundamental exercise, but you're not in control of your risk. You're not in control of your money. You're in God's hands. And again, as much as I have a really deep, strong belief that there's a higher power out there that, 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 that is kind of controlling my life or helping me steer my life and making right decisions, I promise you as the day is long, God doesn't care that you're a long Tesla and it has to bounce. It doesn't have to bounce if it's technically broken, if it's technically losing the previous day's channel. So as much as we you know, all rely on our faith and we believe in this, that, the other thing, it doesn't apply to your trading. And this is where I think a lot of traders got really caught off guard on Friday, okay? You know, we had such a bullish close. My whole thesis was absolutely bull bias. But once we saw the only thing that confirmed prior to Powell speaking was snow. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. You can see we went lit, lit, like just like this. We went from bull bias from, well, actually, I don't want to say bull bias, from buy bias to sell bias very, very quickly. But I, I will tell you this much. I didn't believe, even when we started putting in pivots to the sell side, I did not believe that we were going to have this 
massacre on Friday. Okay, I did not. Like if you notice, if you guys remember, our first two trades on the downside was Tesla and it was Microsoft, right? And if you guys remember, they were just scalps, right? There were scalps, you know, Tesla went down some, Microsoft went down some, they were just scalps. All of a sudden, like an hour later, that's when everything got really, really exaggerated. And, and that's the one thing I was thinking about it over the weekend. There is no way, and especially because we were, you know, buy bias the day before. There's no possible way, at least I'm a human being, at least this is the way I think. There's no possible way I could have possibly turned around and go, well, you know what? Now we're gonna get we're gonna go down four percent. It's 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 not one of those things. So I don't think anybody could have prepared, even if you were prepared for the downside pivots. I, I think nobody was mentally prepared that you're gonna see this big of a destruction uh, Friday afternoon um, after the previous day's channels, which was very, very odd. But again, that, let's, let's let your worst problem be that you're taking positions off too early because again, the only time you're supposed to really, really ride down uh, positions is when they're technically underneath supply. And this is kind of where we wanna start the, the video for next week, okay? so. All of this, right? All of this was very, very bullish. And even the days that we had back tests, right? If you guys remember, even the first back test above the 50 day moving average, you had to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt because again, this was a big, big run, rest, and the market took off again. Here was another decline, and the market started rallying again. But now we're getting very, very close to a very big level, okay? And this is kind of where, uh, for all you guys who are a little bit of a longer term investors, this is where you really should pay attention to this video. It doesn't make a difference what I said in the first 11 minutes. This is kind of where it's the most important. Do you guys remember, right? Do you guys remember when we lost the 50 day moving average, right? And follow this blue line here, right? This is the 50 day moving average. Once we lost the 50 day moving average, this started a sell biased market, okay? Because again, the 50 day moving average is super important, okay? It's not like the five who has control of you know, short term sentiment, because you can see here on Thursday, we reclaimed the five on Friday, we lost the five, right? You don't reclaim, usually don't reclaim and lose the 50 day moving average uh, in the same day, very, very rare. So what happened here is, and this is kind of where you learn from the past, so you don't, you don't you repeat your mistakes. And if you guys remember the first time we closed below the 50 day moving average, this started a seven month decline. Okay, this seven, seven, and we talked about videos prior to the 50 day moving average. We kept on saying, hey, if you're a longer term investor, just understand. Again, I get it. You're not a day trader. You're not, it's not going to probably affect you on a day to day scale. But if we lose the 50 day moving average, you're going to have a problem on your hands. Even if you are a shorter term trader, you knew, listen, once the 50 day got lost, you do not want to be long. Anything under the 50 day moving average, you're going to have a problem. Maybe it might not happen in one day but you're gonna have a problem. And as soon as we started building below the 50 day moving average, again, we have a massive, massive decline. Yes, we had some good rallies in the process. This is why I, I called those rallies probably the most orderly I have seen in bear scenarios in a very long time. But yet the whole theme was underneath the 50 day moving average and we kept on going lower and lower and lower and lower. And there was a lot of destruction, especially from uh, the, the really big growth stories that work from two, uh, 2020 to 2021. So now we're, we're not there yet, right? We're not there yet, but this is the level here, guys. And you, 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 again, if you're, if you're just watching the, the weekend broadcast, just listen to this level here. You see this 303 level, we're not there yet, right? We're at 307 and who knows, maybe the bulls uh, step up and just kind of negate uh, Powell's speech this week, whatever the case may be. But put this level for the future, okay? If we lose the 50 day moving average, and again, granted, we're still $4 away. But if we lose the 50 day moving average, just reference to the past. The past wasn't that long ago. It was just right over here, right? It was on uh, January, February, April, March, right? We were at March. So reference to March, reference to the first time we lost the 50 day moving average, what happened for the next you know, several months, right? So this is the key area for the bulls. The bulls have to hold and reclaim and defend and whatever adjectives you wanna use but they have to reclaim and hold the 50 day moving average because if the bears do seize control of the 50 day, again, all you gotta do is right here and see what happens next. So if you are a longer term investor or you're just carrying a book right now that you're starting to give back some, some of the profits that had the run for the last several weeks, be really conscious of this area because what's gonna happen is if we do give back the 50 day moving average, it's going to start another sell, sell signal. It's not an opinion. This is, you could see it with your own eyes, right? Light blue line, right? 
light blue line, right? This is the fence. Do I think the bulls probably defend the 50 day moving average the first time around? I probably do, right? I probably do. So maybe this 50 day event is not an imminent situation, but it's something at least you have to be conscious for in the future. And again, don't be ignorant. You made the mistake once. If you didn't know how important the 50 day moving average was in April and March, I'm, well, just look back, right? Again, just all you gotta do is look back to the, you know, look back and see what happened, right? So you wanna be prepared. It might never happen. It might be a completely moot point. But again, like I say, every single day going into the next day, it might not happen. Maybe it does. But don't we owe it to ourselves to at least be prepared for what potentially could happen here? And we all know what happens above the 50 day moving average is good. Below the 50 day moving average is bad. It's not an opinion. It's not a subject a subjective conversation. This is reality. This is why these moving average, they save people's lives from guessing. All supply and demand zones are there for you to have a reference point. So you don't have to guess what happens next. Like I say, every video, you're going to be wrong every single day, every single day. Again, I couldn't have been more bullish going into Friday session, but the point is you don't have to be naked, right? You don't have to be unprepared. You don't have to be sitting there in a fetal position after the fact it happens, okay? You could prepare for it and take necessary steps to avoid it, but after the fact, if your money is gone and you knew these levels were very, very important and you put on your blinders and just didn't care because you heard some schmuck on social media talk about, well, yeah, the 50-day moving average is important, then it's a little bit too late. So be a productive and adult, know these levels, understand the significance of these levels from a macro point of view, and make sure that you're trading always, whether you're an investor, short-term trader from a position of strength, not a position of weakness. So let's talk about Friday's session. Um, yeah, it was crazy. It was definitely, definitely crazy. So everybody, and, and again, everybody, if you guys watch the video for the, the whole week, everybody knows, kind of knows by now my opinion of what happened with, with Tesla. I, I thought it was such a sucker's bet. Everybody, a retail screaming, retail screaming, you have to buy it ahead of the split. Why? It's the same valuation. I think we made this case four, I think four nights in a row. And then finally retail got trapped. What happened? Tesla split, nothing happened. And yada, 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 it now gave us two levels, right? And this is why I love pivots, right? You're not falling in love with the stock, you're falling in love with the price action. And here is a perfect example. We knew how important 304 was, right? 304 to the upside. 291 to the downside. That's all I cared about. I didn't care about what was going to happen with deliveries and China and giga plants and Elon impregnating another human being. I didn't care about that, right? All our job was literally take advantage of the channels. We don't know where Tesla's going to be. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. How the hell am I supposed to know where Tesla's going to close? We're just trying to win our interval. That's it. And whether that interval is a dollar, dollars, or multiple dollars, right? That is the gift from us. That's the gift, you know, from, from, from being prepared. But if we sit there and hope and pray and try to figure out what happens next and show everybody how smart we are, you're probably not gonna be trading a long period of time. And that's the most important part. Fall in love with the channels. Don't fall in love with the stock. So here is the pivot, uh, 304 to the upside, 291 to the downside. And again, like I said, I just scalped Tesla. I didn't think for a second, right? Like I thought, yeah, 291 was gonna be a big level. I thought there was a shot, like I said in the webinar, I thought there was a shot at 289, right? And that first pivot went from that 291 area to, and you can see where I'm getting 289 was, it was just right above this channel here. And so I said, you know, listen, I, I, and again, it doesn't sound like a lot anymore, right? But $2, keep this in mind, $2 move in Tesla is the equivalent of a $6 initial move, right, pre-split. Plus, I, first of all, I love the way traders, I know, I know I've said this in previous vid videos now for a couple of in a row, but I love the way Tesla's trading. Ridiculous liquidity, and it's so darn orderly. There's no shakes anymore. Once it takes out a level, man, you just have massive, massive liquidity. So you maybe you won't get that $10 candle anymore, but you'll get that $3 candle initially. And that $3 candle with, with some size liquidity, it's pretty damn good. So I know a lot of you guys kind of feel exactly the same way uh, as I do. But yeah, I mean, I just didn't think uh, Tesla was going to go down eight, you know, so that was the key. But anyway, nice little move on Tesla. Uh, obviously, we are watching the bottom of this channel here for the later in the week for a possible extended move uh, along with the rest of the market. Here is the only upside pivot. And that was kind of our clue of, hey, nothing is going higher. Uh, snow 197 needs to build. Snow and bonkers, absolutely bonkers. Uh, once it took out uh, that 197, it went right to the next supply here. I, you know, we talked about around 206. 
It stopped at 205 and a, at 205.60. It's just a monster, monster move. And then everything crapped the bed. If you notice here, it was all upside pivots, right? Upside pivots never got there, right? Cano, upside pivots. One after another, upside pivots, upside pivots. Even when Amazon opened below, right? That 137.50 still could not build above that 37, 37.90, 38. Just nothing was building and everything was getting pulled down. So that was a really, really big uh, red flag. Even It was all upside pivots, right? In the beginning, uh, snow, take on the way up, take on the way up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 206 is supply, right? 206 is supply, uh, traded 205. Uh, 56 and once we realize hey things are starting to break down below the previous channel that's when i started putting in you know putting in other pivots to the downside right microsoft uh 274.50 held twice if it builds below can flush again the initial thought was a scalp it went down you know it went down you know 70 80 cents you know there's a nice little you know little cash flow at least in the beginning and then later in the day they just completely destroyed it. and look where microsoft closed right i wasn't prepared for this Massive swan dive. I'm prepared for the massive swan dive going into this week for the potential of the 50 day loss. Uh, Zoom, I still like, never got there. Uh, Nvidia got smashed, absolutely smashed. Uh, 168.30 held twice. If it builds below, can lose its 50 day, right? The 50 day moving average. Again, there's a theme here, right? So here is Nvidia. It lost its 50 day moving average, took out the 68.30, took out the 67 and seven and a quarter went all the way down to 62. I mean, again, if the market continues downside this week, look how much room you still have here, right? You got a lot of big, you know, you got a lot of potential. You got a lot of potential if the market continues to go down. Uh, 160, 60 is 60's next stop and went to 62. So big movers here, right? Really, really big movers. So that's it, man. That's it, guys. Uh, obviously, you know, I've made a watch list. As you can imagine, not a lot of short, not a lot of long setups. We'll see, you know, we'll see how the market handles uh, if there is an inside day, the market gets to bounce tomorrow. Remember, it's only a bounce. The market, if, if, again, for the market to go higher, it needs to take out the previous day's high, and that's far, far away. Um, I still, again, if you look at wh what happened to the prices, again, at least my research is giving me downside channels. We'll see how the market opens. We'll see how the market plays out. The only thing we can control is our research and our risk. Guys, have an awesome, awesome remainder of your Sunday. Stay blessed, stay healthy, have an awesome trading week, and with God's help, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.